Interestingly, I think the long-term implication of COVID on China is that never, ever, ever again will any of us, that's, I mean, including the UK in this, mm. Germany, France, United States, ever be dependent on China for essential equipment. I mean, the idea of the Western companies, governments, queuing up and bidding with each other to buy little bits of face masks and things like that from China, that, that will never happen again. And so I think the long-term implication of all this is that the supply chain management that so dominated global economics for the last 20 years, of which largely China was at one end and the rest was were at the other, okay, I think that's over. I think we're going to see a huge amount of onshoring back into the European Union, back into the United States, maybe even back into the United Kingdom uh, of British companies, particularly some of the big British pharmaceutical companies. And I think the reaction to this will be that the alfresco globalization of the last, what, 20, let's say since the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, will be replaced by more managed trade. And I don't think China will recover either its reputation, its brand, or its assumption that everybody will do business with China no matter what. I'm not too sure that's going to happen. Well, that was, that's been one of the big issues that we've been talking about to a lot of people, particularly, and I have noticed there seems to be a correlation between being kind of on the right of politics and being a China hawk or a china critic i'm on the, i'm on the center left of politics yes. in china but 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 you're yeah, also it's still problematic david <laughs> you're still problematic because you're not on the far left and you probably don't have your pronouns on your twitter account and so, stuff like that oh man that's yeah anyway enough <laughs> yeah, yeah let's not get you in trouble with your own side but um on, on the china thing david it's uh i mean one of the things that is becoming very clear is that while uh, none of the externalities of doing business with China uh, were visible to us. While we pretended yes, that, that, that you know, there's no cost to doing business with China, everything was fine. Now suddenly people are starting to realize, and you know, in terms of the economic impact, in terms of the national security impact. Also, you know, we used to talk about China's human rights record. No one talks about China's human rights record. They're talking about concentration camps now. Those are very different ways of framing the question. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I think that... Look, what we know is that pandemics have lingering long-term influences. We, we spoke about, for example, the trauma of the uh, pandemic, the flu pandemic. But even if you go further back, you go to back to the, the outbreak of the, uh, the plague in Marseille in 1720, had profound impacts on the, the French society, the currency collapsed. Unbelievable things. And if you even go back as far as the, uh, the, the Black Death in Florence and, and what happened thereafter was actually a renaissance and, and huge increases in scientific inquiry and la la la. So these have, have profound effects. M my sense is that after the Black Death, for example, uh, there was an extraordinary increase in anti-Jewish sentiment in Europe. It was a phenomenal uh, brutality towards Jewish communities because rumors were spread that Jewish folk uh, had, I think, poisoned the wells. Mm -hmm. What had actually happened was because the Jewish folks had been ghettoized by Christians, they didn't actually mix with Christians, okay? And therefore had a slightly higher rate of, uh, they survived more because they, they weren't infected because they didn't mix with the local population. So nothing to do but there was a vicious, vicious pogroms against uh, Jewish people uh, in the late 14th century. And those pogroms uh, really ended with the, the expulsion of the Jewish community from, from Iberia, where they'd been there for a thousand years. So you have, you have the historical evidence that pandemic, so for example, Irish people uh, were blamed for being, for typhus in the United States. There was an outbreak of typhus in 1848 in New York, or sorry, cholera, cholera, mm. and the Irish were blamed, and it was very much uh, second nature in, in American circles to blame the Irish as being carriers of cholera, but they just happened to be poor, and poor people got this more than anyone else. So I do think that there will be a material impact on China's brand from this, and I'm not sure that it will play out, how it will play out geopolitically, but what I am sure of, is that it'll play out in corporate boardrooms. The idea is, do we want to be so exposed to that country? That's it. Do we want our supply chain to end in China where it might end in Vietnam 
where it might end in Thailand, where it might end in some other Asian country. Our, and do we want to be, it's, 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 it's like the supply line of an army. Do we want to be overstretched? Mm. And, and I think that these are, these are big, big issues. And we have an addiction to, and I, and I use that word in its truest sense, to essentially cheap goods from, Thai, from China, whatever it may be. And it, and it funds our lifestyle, and we see yeah, that as a universe. All this shit that we're working with. These yeah, things, yeah, absolutely. And we all, and we, yeah, until yeah. now, we, we never questioned it. Do you think we're going to enter a world where people are going to be like, do you know what? I don't mind paying an extra tenner for uh, uh, an electronic good as long as it's not made in China. And if it is, I'm not touching it. Well, I'm not sure it'll be that uh, extreme. Mm. But uh, I think that the corporate world will change their perceptions of, as I said, exposure to China. I think, I'm not sure there will be a consumer boycott of Chinese goods. But the idea that China is a neutral player in the world, uh, I think has been badly affected by this. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a mild understatement, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm the master of it. So, you know, and it's interesting. And that's the funny thing about uh, when we talk about Europe, etc. that there's actually much more that bonds us together mm. and separates us in, in the, these perceptions, that the European way, for want of a better word, which is shared by people in Dublin, Manchester, London, Sunderland, Newcastle, Marseille, you know, Cologne, there is a European sensibility about the way we run our societies, our countries, etc. And as long as we fight amongst each other, we don't see that we have extraordinary similarities. I mean, I think it was Freud described the end of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, where the Czechs and the Slovaks and all these characters, he described it as the narcissism of small differences, mm. and nationalism. Mm. And I actually do believe that in the European, British, European context, that what we're being narcissistic about very small differences. And one of the maybe enduring impacts of this will be to wake us up to the fact or alert us to the fact that, you know, we're doing all this trade with China and maybe it's not necessarily the sort of regime that we should be opening our arms to all the time.